What up, this is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of the latest X-Men installment, Dark Phoenix. Hey, before you watch this review, please subscribe to my channel and press that like button and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you would like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this. Dark Phoenix to me feels like an indicator that this is one franchise that has run out of fuel. A franchise that has exhausted all of its excitement and has seen its better days. By this point, it's like you're watching the same X-Men movie that you did many times before. You see one and you've seen them all. But Dark Phoenix in particular, while I do appreciate the visual effects laden action sequences, the story really is only interesting in the first act, when the us versus them is more in the gray areas. But then soon after that, unfortunately it dwindles down to a regular cookie cutter box. And I, as a fan, never really get in the head of Jean Grey, no pun intended. The film presenting her as simply a tortured individual who spews the Hulk's you wouldn't like me when I'm angry line just doesn't make a compelling enough case for me to care. Based on the most celebrated X-Men comic book saga, written and directed by Simon Kinberg, during a life-threatening mission in space, Jean Grey, played by Sophie Turner, is hit by a cosmic force which transforms her into the most powerful mutant of them all she constantly wrestles with this increasingly unstable, incredible power. Jean eventually spirals out of control and tears the X-Men family apart. With the influence of a shape-shifting alien by her side, Jean becomes more and more consumed by the power inside that hurts everybody around her she ever cares about. Sophie Turner is basically the lead star in this latest installment. The storyline revolves around her character, Jean Grey, and she's going on and off from her evil side that relentlessly takes over, becomes a unifying cause that brings even estranged friends like Charles Xavier and Magneto back to a common ground. Maybe it's just me, but Magneto always gets the most interesting lines and this film is no different, and Michael Fassbender always delivers them so deliciously. But many of the other key supporting characters sadly get reduced to just a few lines or a few superpower scenes here and there. Nothing too substantive. There is a major female empowerment push in this movie, and it's very upfront about it. Not only that Storm gets to assert herself, and that the center focus of the story happens to be a woman, Jean Grey. And if I'm not mistaken, Jessica Chastain's character was originally male in the comic books. And on top of that, even Raven herself specifically suggested that the team should be called X-Women instead. Look, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just letting you know that that is the agenda that writer-director Kinberg injected here. I don't mind it at all. After so many Charles Xavier vs. Magneto scenarios, of which this movie also offers some, if feminism is the way that Kinberg feels he can separate this movie from the rest, hey, then have at it, brother. As for me, however, I think it takes more, so much more than just any gender pride to make a movie stand out. As I implied earlier, my favorite part is actually at the beginning when there's friction between Raven and Charles Xavier. Raven now serves more like a maternal mother to these younger mutants, and she feels heavy responsibility for them. She thinks that Charles is too obsessed with making himself presentable to the humans. But Charles truly believes that that is the way to go about making peace between humans and mutants. So I really like that part, and I wish that writer-director Simon Kinberg could somehow maintain that momentum or build on that some more and keep that as a connecting thread all the way to the end. The big bad new villains led by Jessica Chastain have no depth nor layers to them whatsoever. I understand that Jessica's character supposedly serves as this bad angel whispering into the ears of Jean Grey, but the fans never really get to know Vuk or Dabari other than what's on the surface. Which leads me to my last point. I gotta hand it to Sophie Turner. 
who is constantly in tears and in agony and in fury throughout the film. But there's not much more about Jean Grey that I can grab onto. This whole Charles Xavier versus Jean Grey ordeal feels like a subplot that gets unnecessarily extended by the point the anticlimactic ending arrives. I just want the whole thing to be over with so we can move on already. I think you and I can agree that we can all take a long break from the X-Men franchise.